Yeah. Yeah, look at my son. <coughs> You want to get on a mic? <laughs> you can't even see. Look as happy as it can be. Look at it. <laughs> All right, come back. Yeah. The mic. All right, well, yeah, I'm about to start. Yeah, I'm, I'm rolling whenever you guys are. All right, All love right. you. Nip, you. All right, so I'm about to do the intro. We ready? All right, we are live, we are live. This is not a fire drill, no, this is not a test. You are not tuned in to the motherfucking best. You are tuned in to Room Service Radio, and we would like to thank you for tuning in. And when I say we, it's a very special episode. It's just me on the camera, but of course the four-letter words holding down behind the scene. We had to come out here very special to the Hideout Studio to do an interview with the international one himself. Mm-hmm. It's like his third time checking in. My nigga GT, welcome back to Room Service oh, Radio, man, my I appreciate guy. you. Round man. of applause from all these people in the background. Oh, yeah. We got a live audience, goddammit. I ain't never had this. Y'all niggas better act like you're here. You know what I'm saying? First off, I got to acknowledge the fact that niggas is getting haircuts while we're doing interviews. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you dig. <laughs> it's something next level is what you're trying to do, huh? Yeah, you know. You're hey, international. Man. You do international things. <laughs> this nigga here. Hey, that's something I do respect about you. You always set the bar a little bit different from yourself, from all these other, you know, Vegas artists. And mm-hmm. What makes you want to go so hard and differentiating yourself? Can I get that big word? <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I always was different. When I went to performing arts high school and everybody was going to the regular one, I went to full sale and went and got a bachelor's when people just was just doing it. I always wanted to go. I went and interned at Patchwork and then became a staff engineer. So I always wanted to set that bar high for myself because I always saw myself as a top dog in the industry and a big dog, not just a artist trying to hit a lick. I'm trying to be here for a long time. Until I leave, that's when I want to leave, not Oh, I'm just doing it real quick to get some money because it ain't. We can make money all kind of ways, but I make music because I really love it. Okay, so it's a legacy thing for you. Yes, sir. All right. And so for the people who don't know, how long you been in the game? I've been doing this almost 15, 20 years. So are we stopping right now? No. I that's... thought we were stopping because of the damn. No, Kate we th- done. Okay. Yeah, we done. But nah, y'all <laughs> fucked me up with the whole cut thing. But anyway, uh, so 15, 20 years. So you really dedicated to this shit, yes, right? Yes, sir, man. I dedicated my life to this. All right, man. And what is your favorite part about the music industry? Favorite and worst part about it? Um, That people be shady. That's the worst part. You know, people going to be shady, but my favorite part is all of it. I like the music, the business, the, the travel. You said that B word. I thought something else was going to happen. The bitches. Nah, nah. I mean, I come with the music, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah, half the reason niggas getting into the game. But yeah, it ain't about that. Like, it's the legacy, like you said. So see, it's see, all He's really of a musician. It. Niggas like myself get into it for all these other reasons. Yeah. The radio groupies are great. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> so besides doing music, you also an engineer and beat maker. Producer. Producer. I mean, not insult you. <laughs> Producer. So you play instruments? I mean, you know, I mess with the keys a little bit, but I mean, I'm mastered the machine and the equipment okay like my og always said he was like you master your equipment no matter what you got and you can make whatever you want so i always just mastered my gear and just made it one thing i say you are mastering is this marketing i like the way you've been marketing the fuck out of this single loose leaf you know yeah, what I'm saying? you man. got it buzzing in clubs in atlanta and vegas go yes, ahead and sir. break it down your marketing strategy i mean well you know we work with people like yourself we <laughs> award with- winners you know, uh, DJ D Money. Another award winner. He he been working that record crazy. DJ Black Boy out in Atlanta. DJ for Playboy Cardi. He really like started working the record, putting it on a bunch of playlists. Uh, I mean, we drank a Duce and this bitch not that sweet tea. It was just one of them vibes one day. Like my boy came in the studio with a bottle of Duce, and my homegirl was eating chicken with sweet tea. <laughs> and it looked the same, but it's a hell of a difference. And. The rest is history. Okay, okay. Speaking of history, name some of the historic artists that you've been working with. I mean, over time, I, I work with George Clinton. I, I always like to hear that, man, because that's just I amazing. mean, I work with 21 Savage, Young Thug, Fetty Wap, uh, Outlaws, Loonies, Digital Underground, tons of artists. J.I.D. and Cole, I worked on the Off D's record. Hey, J.I.D. is the new one out of there. He's my new favorite rapper's rapper. Yeah, you know yeah, nah, he, he a cool dude, man. Like, 
I work with a lot of artists. Like that was just the thing when you work at Patchwork Studios. Is tons of people coming in and out of there. So I was getting tons of game that you're picking up and being up there at Patchwork. What's the best piece of advice you picked up from being in the studio? Um, time. Everything is about time. Like it's the most consistent thing. That's what the owner Curtis Daniel said, man. He was like, "It's the most consistent thing in your life is time, and that's the only thing like you can't buy. Like everything is your time." So I mean, I see the value in time. It's one hundred seventy-five dollars an hour at Patchwork, so you can't be in there wasting your time. Can't be in there bullshitting. Everything is time. You can't be in there fumbling around, fucking up their session. So it's time. It's people's time. So it's like valuing people's time. So that's why I even went with the time theme for my new project. What's the name of the project again? Is is Time Volume One, and Time stands for True Imagination Makes Everything. Okay, acronyms. I love it. All right, speaking of time, is it time to get Vegas artists really on the map? Yeah, I mean, we've always had talent, but I feel like everybody's been building their brands out here. Everybody's mm-hmm. starting to know the game because the game is out there now. So people people out there getting it, and now everybody's been building it. We got 10, 15 artists that's quality out here right now that can now be a movement, Vegas movement now. So I think it's definitely ready. It's, it's definitely my time. So, uh, shit, I know it's... It's about to be there. Speaking of time, you took the time to come on high here from your family to make sure that you get your stamp here in your home city. So what you got planned for this weekend? I mean, we hitting all the events, all the clubs with D-Money. We're going to be out there with K-Fly. We're we going to be out there, you know, just promoting the single. We on the strip. We everywhere. We we promoting the single. We got Crave, Sultan's Palace, Blue Martini, uh, Classic Jewel, and a few other spots we're going to be at. Uh, we potentially may perform in a few events out here as well. Couple of venues that might pop yeah, off this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we everywhere. How good does it feel to be sitting all the way in the A and just every time you look up, your video getting replayed and reposted all the way out here in Vegas? Oh, man, it's lovely because it's been a long time coming. I was here in the beginning in the early 2000s when it wasn't that many people making music. like, right. And I was in the scene working, working. So to now finally be getting that love is like, that's what we've always wanted. But I mean, you gotta move. A prophet don't get honored in his own home. You gotta go abroad, so. Snap moment, <laughs> come on everybody. <laughs> yeah, man, so you know, once I went to Atlanta and everybody seen like, I feel like Full Sail was like, oh, we gonna see, cause you know, people don't necessarily yeah. respect school and respect actually getting a bachelor's degree. Cause I mean, you can get an associate's at Full Sail, but it ain't, it ain't the same. Like you go in the studio and you go with the lawyers and all that shit right. in your second half. So like to really go to do get the that. business part on that second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how you really learn this shit. And even while I was there, I was working with Bonsai Caruso. You know, he's a super legend, living legend. You gotta break that down. Who, what Bonsai that? Caruso is who did Welcome to Jam Rock, all of Marley's music, like all of Marley's. Like he mixed all that shit. He so was, I like fucking with you. You always give me some history on the behind the scenes because there's be behind the scenes people that's real important to making a track what it next actually is. And he really the one that told me to be a engineer. Like we was in this studio in the hideout and he was like, man, you got a great ear because I've been producing forever. Right. And he was like, you got a great ear. You should start engineering. And while I was at Full Sail, he invited me down to Miami, Circle House Studios. Uh, Kimani Marley was working on his album from Shatis. Mm-hmm. And the Jock here, they dropped the hard drive off. And like Bonsai let me work on the songs, man. It was like six or seven songs. And that shit ended up getting nominated for a Grammy. This was like 2015 or 16. So you worked on a Grammy nominated project. Yeah, man. So, but it was like, man, just staying on the grind and staying on it. Cause so many people that started with me, they either quit or they started doing other shit. Whereas me, I was comfortable being uncomfortable. Okay. Like, I wasn't worried like, oh, I got to have hella money. Oh, I got to have all this shit. I was comfortable being in an apartment when I had to be. God didn't bless me to not own a home, but it was like I was in an apartment for shit over a decade. Yeah. Just doing that shit, just trying to make it, putting all my money into this, never like stopping it. Like that was the whole thing. I never stopped doing this shit. Like even when everybody else was doing everything else, I just still just made music. Like I always knew I was the shit. Like, cause you gotta feel like that to you, cause it's it's kind of insane yeah. doing music. You doing this shit for years, and if something ain't happening, you just gotta keep motivating yourself to just do this shit. 
So if you don't think you the shit, like how you gonna really be in it and compete? I don't right. look at like people always like, oh, I want to be the king of a city and shit. I don't look at it like that because my competition is Pharrell, Kanye, all these motherfuckers. They making, they actively making music. That's our competition. Each other ain't our competition. Like we trying to compete to be a big dog. So that's how we have to look at it. So I was never like trying to look to the side. I was always just tunnel focused, vision. tunnel vision. Like, and I was just seeing what nobody else was doing because I knew my music was like an interesting sound because I've seen a lot. I've been all over the world. Like, it, it's it's different. So it's like, I I just wanted to give a different sound in my own take. I didn't want to be a replica of somebody else. I just wanted to do my shit. Well, speaking of time, let's take it back in time. You've been out here on the Vegas scene for quite a long time. I wasn't really around in the beginning of the real Vegas hip-hop scene. Give me some names and some veterans that we should go look up and then some new ones that we should look up out here. I mean, when I first started, it was Twix was making music, whoa, Miss whoa. Place, <laughs> uh, Mario and Slim, they was making music, uh, Bozy T was making music. Hey, one of my favorite low-key producers is that man right yeah, there. Bozy T yeah, Bozy T-Queen. He gave he me are. a beat for... Another project I'm working on right now. Like okay. he, he's official. Mm. Um, the Audibles was making music back then. Uh, jazz and all of them were making music. Uh, Fats, free Fats, was making music during that time. I mean, it was tons of people. Well, love, yeah, nah, love was definitely, but she was nah. writing songs and. Damn, <laughs> through the oop, my nigga, you supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> well, love, we supposed to be working anyway, cause she's a songwriter. She's a great songwriter. I help, but you know, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we need to be making songs anyway. <laughs> so for yeah. Sure. So who are some of the newer talent that you out here fucking with? Uh, I mean, definitely jazz. Uh. I mean, I have, I've, I see the guys. I see two C's. Like he's actually, I've actually like hung out with him in Atlanta yeah. and all of that. Like he's, he's definitely doing his thing. Uh, Jazz is doing his thing. Uh, I don't really know a bunch of the artists. Landlord. So you still know the staples. So we got to get tapped in with the new. Yeah, new yeah. Breed. I don't really know like the new ones. You know, being in Atlanta, I'm around yeah. all of that constantly. So the ones that I know, know, I know them. Right. But then I don't really know everybody out here like that yet. And what aspect of the Atlanta music industry do we really need to implement out here in Vegas to really take over? I mean, Atlanta has a lot of business people there, like people that are managers and execs, A&Rs and different shit like that. So we got to get infrastructure. I've been saying that shit for hella years. Like, it's a lot of artists, but artists don't know the business and right. they don't. If you're not willing to educate yourself, like you got to take that risk and intern somewhere in a different city where you got to learn that shit, get relationships, because all the shit about who you know. So if you ain't around meeting other people and you just rapping and competing, that shit ain't never going to work. So you got to get the movers and shakers around here that can see the talent and then go take it to them places that are the business spots to show people like, yo, Vegas got some shit out there. You got to go see it. But until we start getting those type of individuals building up out here, I think... It's gonna be difficult. It's gonna take people to go elsewhere. But for me, like I went and I still went and built my own infrastructure, even though I had I built a lot of relationships. But then like Courtney, I met her at Patchwork. She's now my manager. But it was like we building together. I was gonna ask you the importance of the team, because I love the way that you move. I always I just telling the artist this last night, hey, pay attention to this nigga GT. You're gonna see me posting him. I told him he need to pull up today because I love your the way you set your shit up and the way you work it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it's niggas who come through to the interview, to the radio all the time. They do their interview and they gone. They may yeah. cut some clips and may repost it. But you re-tagging me and all them, that gets you repost. They get that, that keep that audience there. I don't understand mm -hmm. why more people don't do that. What made you learn that? Or where did you learn that? I mean, we just watched the game. We were students of the game. Like, if you watch and see what's working for somebody else, chances are that shit will work. You just got to try it. Yeah. And so I just, we've done it the wrong way. And then we did it the right way. Like, it's just like we went through it and just kept trying. We see what works with other people because, I mean, all this shit is trial and error. But now it's so much information out there and the Internet. You can see what people are doing. It's like if you're not watching the game or got somebody with you that's watching the game, it's going to be difficult. Now, as an independent artist, how do you not get discouraged when you don't jump out the gate with 100,000 streams or 200,000 streams or, you know, these big major numbers? I mean, it's like a slow grind. 
Slow grind better than no grind for it me. Sucks. Like I'm over, I'm almost two hundred fifty thousand on my loose leaf single. So it ain't have to. I just jump wanted out. to hear you talk that shit. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? it's like it ain't have to jump out crazy right away, but it jumped out there and it consistently did its thing, and that shit just going up, and that's why we doing all of this to make it go up even crazier, because now more people are seeing it and they putting a the face to the music. It ain't just hearing the music and hearing everybody shout it out and not seeing me. So it's like, all right, let me go out there so they can see me again. Now, we live in an era where I like to call microwave music, where niggas just put it out and then they put some more in, you know what I'm saying, real quick. What makes you want to stick and keep working this single? Because it's been a while, because this your, like I say, it's your third time coming through with this. I mean, this, that's kind of how the game is. Like, you got to work that shit, because there's billions of people in the world. So, shit, just because 200,000 heard that motherfucker, a couple more million got to hear that shit. More to hear. Yeah, millions of people got to hear that shit. So, if you don't keep working it, how they going to hear it? Because you don't know where it could pick up. Like, Shit, this shit, Jay-Z and them can see this shit and be like, yo, we want to use this for some Duce ad or anything, but they got to know it's there. Right. So we got to give it that traction, give it the legs, because you don't want to just jump off of it. And I mean, my shit like that slow cooking, my shit quality, like quality music on stand. It ain't going to go stale. Like a lot of people, music go stale. Like my shit, when you put the time and you put the the real resources into it, It'll do what it do, it's supposed to do. If you got a bad recording, you can't expect that shit to go crazy. Right. But if you go and you record it right, you mix it right, you get it mastered by a real mastering engineer. Shout out Mike Bozy. Like, he's a legendary mastering engineer. Like, uh, most people's favorite albums, he mastered it. Like, he just did cold shit. He do all 21. He do all Kendrick. All He do the real shit. Speaking of cold, go ahead and give me your opinion on this album. I mean, I like Cole album. I'm not the hugest like Cole fan. This album made me more of a fan. Yeah, definitely. Like, this is my favorite Cole album by far. Like, yeah. I've never listened to any of them completely through like yeah, this. Yeah, like yeah, I've listened to this maybe five times all the way through. He made a good album. Like, it's it's a good album. But it's funny. I like that album, but then I like the slime language too. Oh yeah, that shit was hard as fuck. That Hell shit yeah. hard as fuck. Thug did his thing. I fuck with Thug. And he got a variety of artists on there. That you know, what I'm saying it's a good showcase for his artists and the show the other artists slapping. that he fuck with. Yeah, it sound good. So I know you're trying to build your label and your infrastructure. Who are some of the people that you look at and get inspired by? Kanye, uh, Jay Z, Nas. Shit, uh, Pharrell. I, I mean, I, the legend, Swiss. Like, people that are really, like, changing the game and, like, building and expanding hip-hop. That's who I love. Like, who's ever expanding the, the genre. So who on a new wave are you looking at that's going ahead and expanding the genre? New wave, like what? Younger producers. Because, I mean, the people you name, they veterans, they legends, they goats. You know what I'm saying? They solidified, yeah. but is it some young, young modern, you know, I mean, Maybe Metro and all is like my Metro, but then he's a legend now, yeah, Metro, even though he's yeah, young. Yeah. So it's like the ones that you catch, because a lot of the times with that kind of music, especially if you're doing trap shit, it, you never know the producers' names. That's why niggas scream that shit at the beginning of the tag. The yeah, because like Southside, he even can, he's a legend. So it ain't he just now it's a lot of young legends. Yeah. So they all are just young legends now, whereas like in their teens and early twenties, I mean. I don't really know hell of people like. So how long you been out in Atlanta? Since 2015, so what, six years. And how have you seen the change? Because I mean, I I was out there around there in 2015, 2016, and I went recently. It's like a different city now. I mean, it's a lot of transplants, like anywhere, like it's hella black people. Yeah. And shit. Unfortunately, when it be a lot of black people from a lot of different places, a lot of shit happens. So. Things just happen. I mean, it still has the culture right. of Atlanta, and that's like the heartbeat of it all. You still got the people from there, but a lot of people from a lot of other places bring their issues bring on down. Uh, different shit. So, because like I'm from Vegas, but I still went down there. But it's like I have my little section that I, I you know, I knew right. I was doing music. I wasn't out there for the bullshit. About. Right. Yeah, like, I'm on the music. Everybody knows me from that. Like, OGs respect me. Like, I didn't did sessions with Big Black. So, shit, Big Facts, they repost me all the time. That's dope. Like, so, but that's, like, through relationships and through working and being on the scene. So, it's, I mean, it's all about who you know. You got to know them OGs in the game because them OGs, they still 
making Still the moves. relevant. They relevant and they making moves. So it's like it's all about who you know. All right. So the people need to know GT. What's the big top three things they need to know about you? I'm a man of character. Uh, I love quality, just quality everything. A great quality of life, quality music, quality everything. Um, and that we here to set a true legacy and people going to know Vegas for real once they tap in with International GT. Then we going to really be able to say, oh, we got us one for real, okay. stamped, born at Sunrise Hospital, like stamped. A real Vegas boy. Boom. Like, I think that's going to be, I'm going to leave that legacy. All right. Well, let's get into this project. So go ahead. The name of it is Timeless, right? Timeless Volume 1? No, Time. Time Volume 1. True Imagination Makes Everything. I'm always good for fucking up a name. Everybody know that. Yeah, True All Imagination right, so Makes Everything. Who did the production on this project? Uh, Myself. Um, I got a joint from DJ Payne 1, who's a, like a cat that makes a lot of beats for a lot of industry people, platinum producer. I'll go Google later, okay. Yeah, DJ Payne one did a joint. Uh, Smitty did a joint. Smitty from out here, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, my yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, me and Smitty, we produce a lot together. Okay. But Smitty sent me a pack of beats like a week and a half ago, and the project was done, but I went back in and I jumped on it two, three nights ago. We recorded it, mixed that shit, I got it mastered that next day. And we made that the first song on the project. Because he sent me that shit, and I was like, nah, I got to do this now. Okay. It was one of them beats you just had to get to. Yeah, it, it just felt good, and it felt like a good opener to go the with the other songs. Because, you know, Loose Leaf makes people think, like, I just do, like, the Atlanta-type shit. Yeah. Like, the Sangy rap shit. Right. But it's like, really, I'm a true artist. I'm a real MC. I'm really making these beats. I really recorded myself and all the people on the album. So that's you putting the medicine in the candy, basically. Yeah, like the skits, all that shit. Like, I got people on this motherfucker, the relationships, everything to put this together. I mixed it. Mike Bosey mastered it. It was a lot of things that went into making this. And I think through just that first impression of Loose Leaf, people may think, oh, I'm just doing this one type of thing. So it's like I I like to come and do interviews with you and now let people see who I am so they can know my personality to know like it's deeper than that shit. I'm a real boss with this shit and really putting all this together. So it's speaking of man of character, it's kind of rare that I've never had one person. You know, you've been on the show a few times. Never one person that came back and said any type of fuck shit about you. Like niggas who ain't seen you and been like, oh, I seen you have my nigga GT. They got old basketball stories about you. Niggas like, oh, plug me with him. I want to work with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I know you got to be a man of character because I heard about you before I even met you. You know what I'm saying? Through our mutual friend. I ain't gonna say his name, but anyway, that guy over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He always spoke highly of you way before I met you. I knew what straight lace was, you know what I'm saying? I mm. like the way that you marketed yourself way back in, what, 2010 or some shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you always been on this shit. Where do you see yourself going in the next five years? Bonsai. That's Bonsai Caruso, okay. who we talked about earlier. All right. That's the living legend. Okay. Legends in the building. Yeah, but yeah, no, nah, I mean, five years, we're gonna have a true infrastructure out here. Straight Lace will be on the map stamp, and people going to know that GT is one of them ones, for sure. Like, that's what it's going to be. All right, we got any final words before we get up out of here? Man, I, I just appreciate the city really getting behind the record like they are. Like, people really supporting that shit, and people like, like that I sent you a video of a girl twerking to the motherfucking song. Man, the day, you people know that saying? ain't never, that know me making music for years and never posted my shit, didn't post it, like... So I'm starting to see that love and people know that it's real and know that I'm really doing this for real and genuinely trying to put on for the city. I ain't fucking with nobody. Right. I'm just doing my thing, putting out quality shit, and they just, the people gonna know it's that time. All right, and it's time for people to get a dose of this quality, you know what I'm saying, get a dose of this time. So once again, appreciate you checking in on Room Service Radio. Always inviting us out. Appreciate you always, you in love, man. Yes, sir, appreciate man. Appreciate you always, my guy. Yes, sir. Hey, y'all know what it is. Check in, press play, and enjoy your stay. We out. Round of applause for me, goddammit. That was great. <laughs> you got to have self-confidence, didn't he say? He just said it, goddammit. That was a good interview.